All right, so I liked quite a bit of what Canadian teams did on day one of free agency, notably with how the Flames added pieces to help out their current roster while also having an eye on the rebuild. Apart from Sharon Govich, nobody got more than two years, which is smart from Conroy given where the Flames are right now. As far as the pieces themselves, I like what Toronto added on D and in net, but I will say I'm not too crazy about the money and term for some of them, but hey, that's what you gotta do to get these guys in free agency. And I also think Vancouver did a decent job reloading in lieu of losing Lynn Holman Zadorov. There are two moves from two Canadian teams that I want to hone in on here though. Number one, that's left Koski contract. After a season and a half of games played into his NHL career, and more than half a year away from his 21st birthday, Montreal has locked in Uri Slavkovsky for eight years at $7.6 million per season. Now, we've seen this type of thing before. We saw it recently with Jack Hughes and with Tim Stutzla as well, but as soon as his contract was announced, immediately it was met with divisiveness. From what I can tell, most Habs fans either like or straight up love this contract, but I've also seen people saying it's quite an overpay and too big a risk for a guy with 60 career points, and that they should have been more patient and waited until next year to get a better idea of who he is as a player. And I understand where those people are coming from. It's true, it is a risk, and it's being made on a very small NHL sample size. But if I'm a Habs fan, I see this as a positive. I would be much happier seeing Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon take educated gambles on guys like this with very high upside, and plenty of room and opportunity for the contract to turn into a steal, rather than locking in aging vets like Gallagher and Anderson who've already peaked in that regard. And yes, the kid was on fire the last half of the season. But again, what I see here is an educated gamble from Hughes and Gordon. I don't think they're giving him this money because he played well in the last half of the season. I think they're making this decision now because they're confident in what it could mean going forward. If you're completely convinced that this guy's a star in the making and he's only going to keep getting better, why not get it done now for less rather than waiting for it to happen and having to break the bank more because of it? Right now you get him under Caulfield and Suzuki. Your big three up front is locked up for under $8 million each. That's nuts. The cap's increasing. If he had another breakout season upcoming here, you might not have got him for that number. At the very least, you save yourself an entire negotiation that you could focus on someone to surround that big three. Not to mention the extra cap space itself you'll have to build around them. So yes, it's a gamble, but it's one that if I'm a Habs fan, I'm happy to see them take, versus a lot of other GMs who will happily back up the Brinks truck for aging vets on bad, long contracts. I like the strategy, even though it doesn't necessarily work out all the time. The Oilers were also fairly busy yesterday, basically bringing the band back together. Of the returnees, there are none of them I don't like, but Perry definitely got more than I thought he was going to. Nothing crazy though. I love that Brown and Yanmark are both back at under 1.5 million each. I think those are solid, solid moves come playoff time. I I am surprised to see Henrique back, especially considering he was reportedly offered more money by other teams. He was probably lured by the fact that Edmonton has another serious shot to go all the way here, but I was most fascinated to see what they would do with the Jack Campbell buyout money. It's only for this year that they get $3.9 million in cap savings, but they still get it, and I was highly doubtful that a team in its cup window, the prime years of McDavid and Dreisaitl, would leave that money unspent. I'm a fan of that Jeff Skinner signing, man. It's reminding me of Matt Duchesne last year getting bought out by Nashville and signing a one-year three mil with Dallas. I wonder how Evander Kane feels about a top six spot probably being taken up by Jeff Skinner here, but to go from Buffalo with the big money contract where it definitely wasn't sunshine and rainbows for him, now you're being paid a fraction of that with much less pressure, just go out and basically be a secondary scorer. Now that he makes three instead of nine, all of a sudden those numbers he put up last year in Buffalo are a steal if he can reproduce them instead of making him a buyout candidate. And knock on wood, he stays healthy and the Oilers don't have a season full of collapses like their first two months last year. He's actually going to get to play a playoff game for the first time in his 14 year career. I also like the Arvidsson signing, like if he stays healthy, he's a good Good top to middle six producer. Basically, he can be what Connor Brown was brought in to be before he became the ultimate bottom six playoff player. And I know technically the Oilers signed Brown for 775, but really it was for 3.25 million, which tells you the type of expectations they had for him coming in. Overall, some pretty shrewd moves from two teams who are completely different parts of their competitive cycles. Montreal's chugging through the rebuild and Edmonton's tinkering to try to win a cup. Give me your thoughts on these moves, notably the Slavkovsky extension and the Jeff Skinner signing. For more videos on these two teams, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Watching. You're awesome.